Hello everyone, in front of me are the parts to a project I've been working on for well, probably way too long. So in addition to all my other hobbies like combat robots and machining and all that good stuff, I actually am a amateur rock collector. Um, we collect a lot of rocks and fossils and stuff like that. And we have quite a bit that we would like to tumble and polish and you know have throughout the rest of the house. And so I figured it'd be a good idea to build a rock tumble. I looked at what was out there. Of course, I didn't like it, so I figured I can build my own. So here are the pieces for that. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of assemble this, put it together, show you kind of how I did the design and everything else. And um, the subtext for this video is you should get a 3D printer if you don't already have one. There's a lot of 3D printed parts on this. So let's dive in and look at the design of my DIY rock tumbler. So this is actually not the first rock tumbler I've ever built. I built one probably about a decade ago and it really wasn't very good. And I learned a lot of things along the way. I learned that you need um, better bearing supports. You need a motor that can run continuously for a really long time. Having adjustable speed is nice if you're doing different size drums. And ultimately the drum is pretty important and I'll get into that later. Um, most of this build was actually pieces that I had around the shop. So this 8020 was some stuff that I just had in my parts bin. In. Um, a lot of the linear rods were stuff I had. So a lot of the design decisions for this were based around, you know, things I just already had. And I tried to buy as little as possible for this. And in doing so, I ended up probably buying more than if I had just started and not had anything on hand. But, you know, that is how these projects go. So um, let's kind of zoom in a little bit and start looking at the frame and then just kind of go out from there. So this is the frame of the rock tumbler, and it looks suspiciously similar to the previous shot. It's just a little bit closer. Uh, this is 25 series extrusion, so it's about one inch or 25 millimeters square, and I'm just using these 3D printed brackets to hold the whole thing together. And this is just kind of the platform that everything sits on, and on the bottom I just have four feet just very simply screwed directly into the T-nuts like that. So this gives me a platform to build everything else on top of. Now I configured it like this because I wanted these rails to be open so that everything could just kind of slide in. Just makes it a little bit easier to kind of expand and modify as things go along. And the reason it's this size is because this is just kind of the extrusion I had on hand. I think I had one piece that was exactly this long and I think maybe one of these other pieces was that long. So I only had to make a couple cuts just to get it to this size. And so the rock tumbler is pretty simple. You just basically have two rollers. Uh, one of them is a drive roller. One of them is an idle roller. One of them spins, spins the drums on top, pretty much simple as that. And the other reason why I used the 8020 is because when I spaced my pillow block bearings, I can make them a little bit closer, I can make them a little bit further away, and let's say I wanted to do a really big drum, all I would need to do is make longer ones of these, and then I can expand the whole thing out. So yeah, that's really all there is to that. Uh, let's take a look at the pillow blocks and all the bearing setup. I printed out four of these little uh, pillow block bearing holders, and these are just bearings that I had on hand, so they just kind of pop directly into here, and they sit on the outside of the frame, one, two, three, four, like that. And the bearings actually sit on the outside, so when I put the rails in here, I have these 3D printed little um, shaft collars. They slide in there, and then there's a shaft collar on each side. That keeps it held in place that way. And then I'm just using washers just to kind of space everything out. So one of these will be the idle, and then on the other side, you see this one has a pulley attached and that will be the drive. So the idea here is that, you know, obviously you can change the position of everything pretty simply, get everything squared up, no problem. And since I'm using the same shafts and the same configuration front and back, it makes it nice and simple. For drive, I am using a um, Robot Zone um, gear motor. I'll have a link down below. I think it's, uh, what is this, 600 RPM. That gears down nicely. And this actually just sits on top of one of the pillow blocks and it just has some grooves made inside of it. So you can adjust the tension to tension the belt. So the nice thing about this design is this can be kind of added to either side. Doesn't really matter. It's just kind of configurable. And in theory, I can, you know, swap out the motor, put a different motor in, stuff like that. 
And finally, the other thing I noticed when I built my first rock tumbler is the drums that you put in here will kind of want to wander around a little bit. Um, this can be perfectly flat to keep them from wandering, but they're going to want to kind of go to one end or the other. So I 3D printed these little pieces that hold a bearing. And so this sits inside the channel, inside the channel, I said, sits inside the channel like that sticks out just enough so that when the drum kind of goes to one side or the other, it will just rub against this bearing instead, because otherwise it would just rub against here and make a mess. So it just gives it a nice little surface to rub against. And that was definitely something I learned from my first iteration. The rods or the rollers are just, you know, straight stainless steel, so they're pretty slippery. So I went to the hardware store and just got some vinyl tubing to put on the outside of it just to give it a little bit more friction and traction for the drums to actually spin around them. And it was pretty tricky to get on there since the tubing is undersized, so it kind of needs to stretch a little bit. So I just broke out the heat gun just to heat it up a little bit, and that made it more flexible to get onto the shaft. I did try using compressed air to kind of, you know, expand the tubing and slide it in, but I didn't have enough hands to actually hold the air gun, hold the tube, and also hold the shaft, so it kind of just shot the shaft across the room, and that was pretty fun. Uh, but I did off-camera use this technique, and that actually worked out pretty well, but it just took a few minutes to get these um, vinyl tubing onto the rollers. Hopefully this vinyl tubing will give the drums a little bit more grip. Here are the drums I'm using. I actually got these off of eBay and ended up buying these instead of making them just because honestly the parts probably would have cost me more to make than just buying it. Um, these little end caps can get kind of expensive and this is just a large diameter PVC pipe that's all glued together. And then there's some fins on the inside that will help with the tumbling action. So I've got two of these and hopefully there's going to be enough friction between that to actually drive these drums around. So let's get the rest of this put together. Getting all this assembled is pretty straightforward. There's nothing really to talk about. I'm mostly just talking right now as filler so that you can watch it being assembled. But really, I don't have any comment. Um, you basically just slide everything in the channel, screw it down, and that's basically all there is to it. So. Here's some more footage of it being put together. It's fascinating. So here is the finished product. Um, this front roller is nice and free, riding on those beautiful bearings and it ha doesn't have any slop side to side. And then the back one is driven by the motor and if we just press the button, we can easily control everything. and then turn it back off. Now, if you don't like this angle, it's not comfortable to you, you can obviously move this down, move it more up like that, so that's pretty nice. And there's actually a screw right in here that you can control the tension of this mechanism, which, you know, that's probably the most important feature of a rock tumbler is to be able to control the tension of the pivoting display for your motor controller. But yeah, everything looks good. Let's um, go ahead and throw a drum on top of it and see what happens. Yep, that will do the thing. So I realized I didn't really um, talk more about what's inside this box. Let's kind of slide this over and um, take a look inside this box. So there's just uh, six screws holding in this face plate and I got this new um, magic screwdriver that I really like. It's uh, made my life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and take out these screws. So that's really all that's inside of here. I have this um, Meanwell 24 volt power supply and I should clean up some of this wire. Um, and this is this really simple um, little motor controller I got off of Amazon. And so far it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. It has the input for the potentiometer for a speed control. I just had one. No, actually I think it came with that. Yeah, it did come with that and I just wired it in. Um, so that's what that is. And then it just has the um, little momentary for the on and off. So yeah, it's a nice little thing. I mean, it's really cheap. It might not last um, terribly long, but I thought it was kind of nice with the screen and everything. So yeah, that's really all there is on the inside. Okay, I'm going to go on the limb and say that you probably want to know a little bit more about this hinge mechanism since this is the selling feature of the rock tumbler. 
So it is just simply two 3D printed pieces. This is actually an early generation before I figured out some things. If we just take a hex driver and undo it like that, you can see we've got one screw that runs through the whole thing, nut that holds the whole thing in place, a spring, and then our two halves. So the way that this works is these two kind of fit together like that. Obviously the um, little splines line up with each other. And then there's just a lip on the inside of that that the spring presses against. That's what holds the whole thing together. And when you pull it apart, that's how you get that. Now the old version, which is this, um, doesn't have any um, captive way to hold the nut in place. On the newest one, there's actually a hex pattern that holds this nut in there. And there's actually a nylon um, lock nut so that from the outside, all you have to do is twist this to adjust that tension. So if we put this in, it's kind of a pain to get together. There we go. So nut is in place and it has, you know, some amount of tension, but as we tighten this down, we can actually increase the amount of tension. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, first time for me really uh, making a joint like this and it turned out pretty good. Just um, one more excuse to get into 3D printing. So this is the point in the video where I'm supposed to like turn this on, snap my fingers and then open one of these drums and all of the polished rocks are gonna come out all pretty. Well, I'm not gonna do that because that's not how life works and the sooner you learn that, the better off you're going to be. Um, I'm gonna have a separate video that shows you kind of the process on how to tumble rocks. It's actually a pretty involved process. There's like four steps. You have to do a cutting phase, which kind of just roughly shapes them. Then you have a second phase, which kind of smooths over that cutting. Then you have a pre-polishing phase, which gets them ready for polishing. And then you have the fourth phase, which is actually polishing. And that's one of the reasons why I have two drums. One, you do all the you know first steps in, and then the last one is the final polishing step. So it's a pretty involved process. Process, but I will cover that in a separate video. So be on the lookout for that. As always, check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Is this really how you want to spend your free time? I'm not going to judge you if that's what you want. Wouldn't be my choice, but I'm not you.